Hey guys, welcome to your mini course on how to stop overthinking. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, I have been an overthinker and each year or each month, I feel that I am a bit less of an overthinker and I do believe that it's thanks to the tools that I'm going to be covering with you guys today. But I want you to understand that these tools are only really helpful if you put them into practice. So you may hear them today and think like, okay, that sounds like a good idea, and then store this information somewhere and never actually put it into practice. And if you have that tendency, let me just tell you right now that it's time that you start changing the way in which you do things to be able to spend time helping yourself feel better. So uh, my name is Olga, by the way, and I am the founder of Olga's Way. I help women specifically, I, I do life coaching, and I do counseling and I teach courses like this one, helping women have a healthier mindset, having more confidence and feeling better about themselves. This is my ultimate passion and mission on earth. And I am so happy you're here and that we're connecting and that I'll be helping you stop the overthinking. I think this is so helpful and I know that many of us do it. And there's not a lot of information or help out there um, helping us understand how to best stop the overthinking. So if you are overthinking, there's uh, three things that I want you to understand first and foremost. Overthinking comes as a side effect of being exposed to stress. So if you find yourself overthinking, I'm sure you've noticed that you haven't always had moments where you overthink. They come and go kind of like waves, and usually they show up when we're under a lot of stress. So overthinking should mean to you is like a cue of your body that you are under stress and that some changes are needed. Opposite from what we believe is that the overthinking causes the stress, which is also true, but it doesn't originate there. Overthinking comes as a side effect of something stressful happening in our lives. So when you begin to notice that you're overthinking, it's important to recognize that there is a source of stress in your life. And it's very important for you to understand what the stress is, where is it coming from, what's causing the most amount of stress, and is there anything that you can begin to do to mitigate the stress in your life? So if the stress is coming from work, is there anything that you can begin to incorporate into your life to lower the stress at work? I am not just saying change jobs and saying, how can you make the work or your attitude towards work be less uh, of a stressful response? If the stress is coming from your relationship or from your health, same attitude, like what can I do? What's in my power to do to lessen the amount of stress that I receive from that scenario? So uh, I want you to take a moment right now and just stop what you're doing, take a moment to really ask your soul, like really go in and ask yourself, what is causing the most amount of stress in my life right now? What is causing the most amount of stress in my life right now? Maybe it's an area, general area of your life. Maybe it's more than one, but, I, but do the work. Just ask your soul. Once you have that answered, it is a lot easier to go back and say to yourself, okay, so how can I mitigate that? Mitigation is not the same as avoidance or getting rid of it. Sometimes the source of the stress is impossible to fully get rid of in our lives, but we can certainly mitigate it. That means how can we make this have less impact in ourselves? How can I go about this stressful situation that has shown up in my life without taking a toll on me or a big toll on me? Like, so how can, I, how can I mitigate? And I'll give you some ideas throughout this course about the things that have been proven to be really helpful to help mitigate stress. But I would like you to start thinking of your own ideas. What do you think you can do to take responsibility of your attitude towards this very stressful situation in your life? And maybe you are not aware that it's that stressful, but it is having an impact on your body. So having that awareness is very important. Number two, you're probably, if you're overthinking, you're probably giving too much power to what others think of you or your behaviors or your actions. If that is what's causing your overthinking, that also comes from stress 
And um, here's the thing. You think you know how others think. And so you think you're thinking how you think they would think. And in response, you're creating yourself more stress and you're trying to behave in a way that is not authentic. You're now trying to respond to what you think they will want from you, which no longer is what you would like to do. So that is also the main cause of overthinking. When we start giving too much attention, too much power to what we think others want, to what we think others think, and when we feel that we want to control the perceptions that others have of ourselves and our behaviors. That is the main, one of the main causes of overthinking because the thinking never stops. Why? Because this is not evidence-based information that you have in your mind, like others think of me that, and I don't like how they view me, but it's all in your mind. You think, how, you, think you know how they think, but if they've never said this to you. So that is giving too much power to people's opinions and to what you think their opinions are. And there's a solution to that that I will be talking about later in this video. But just keep in mind, if that is you, that's a big cause of stress. And that's something that you're going to have to do differently and assume a different attitude about people, people's opinions in your life. And number three, another main cause of overthinking is that you may be experiencing anxiety. And anxiety is a survival technique that has come through the evolution of humanity so that we can recognize danger and we can stay safe. So it is happening a lot more now that many of us are struggling with anxiety and we don't even know it. So we don't recognize that the overthinking is coming from feeling unsafe. And if that is you, don't worry. I also have some pointers in this video that will talk about anxiety specifically and how to help the overthinking that is coming from an anxious place. The reality is that if you're overthinking, that probably is giving you anxiety either way. So th those pointers are gonna be helpful to you, but I wanted you to start this class be, um, understanding what are the three main causes of, of that overthinking? Why does it happen? And so I hope that that is helpful and I'm going to be moving forward now to what you can do. I've selected six or seven pointers that I find have been really helpful. I am really hoping that you listen to this information, that you put it into practice. Please don't believe anything I say. Don't take it as the ultimate truth, but listen to the concepts and then go and test them, test them yourself. And if it actually has a good impact in, in you, then you know if this is true or not. Because my truth, my research, what I've seen working in other people, may not be your truth. So it's very important that you don't take it as the ultimate truth, but that you take this information and you consult it with your soul, you meditate with yourself, whether or not any of the pointers that I'm gonna give, be giving you today speak to you. If they speak to your soul, if you go bring them into practice and they actually have a powerful transformational impact in your way of thinking, then you know that was for you. And so my intention is to give you as many as possible so that you can choose from these tools and, and apply the ones that speak the most to you, okay? So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about, it's called, a ment it's a mental trap, okay? Many of us, when we're overthinking, we fall for this mental trap. There's about 10 to 12 uh, research and well-known mental traps that people who suffer from overthinking or anxiety do. And I'm just going to talk about one of them in this video because I don't have a lot of time, but I'll be happy to do more talk uh, about this with you at, an, at another point. So one of the biggest mental traps that cause people to overthink is that we think we can read minds and that we can tell the future. So have you ever gone to a place and had a feeling and realized or, or come back and talk to a friend and said, I know. Olga was mad at me. And your friend will say, oh, why? Well, she gave me the cold shoulder. I am sure she was thinking that I arrived late and that that was my fault and she was mad at me. I hear my clients tell me that their mind reading thoughts all the time, as well as their future reading thoughts. Those will be thoughts where we think we know the future. I know for sure if I go to a grocery store, I'm gonna run into my student and I don't want to run into my student because I don't have a good relationship with my student. So I'm going to stop going to the uh, grocery store. The, 
the uh, the reason we use mental traps is to stop behavior because we don't want to do the things that makes us feel stressed out, but also because we want evidence that what we think is true. So the more mental traps we have, the more trapped we feel, but also the more we're looking into in our environment for proof that the way I'm thinking is correct. So I'm here to ask you to stop mind reading. You cannot read minds. Nobody can, and nobody can tell the future. I know there's people out there making money based on these two premises, but the truth is the, the future is unwritten. Nobody knows what the future holds. And definitely, unless you have super special powers, which I would love to learn, nobody can read somebody's mind. So unless you have concrete evidence where Olga told you, I am mad at you and this is why, you can't assume that you know what Olga is thinking. How many times have you looked mad, but you are overthinking and you're worried? And people may say like, wow, why are you so mad? And you'd be like, I'm not mad. I'm just overthinking. I know that's happened to me. So we can't assume that we read minds. The risk about reading minds is what I was saying earlier. When we do the overthinking because we're afraid of what people think of us or what their opinion of us will be. Well, the risk about reading minds is that then you start reading minds in a way that proves your, your, your main fear, whatever that fear is. So if you're afraid of being rejected, you're going to start noticing everything I'm doing, all my body language, and trying to think, see, Olga is rejecting me. She didn't make eye contact. She didn't uh, reach out to, to shake hands with me. Whatever the mental uh, tape you have, the story you have, playing will replay. So very important that when you begin to read minds, when you begin to think like, I'm sure this person feels that way, or I'm sure this person will think I'm an idiot, or I'm sure this person will think I'm not uh, attractive. Unless you have evidence, it's just an opinion of yours and it's not serving you well. And that leads you to overthink and overthink everything. And in the end, you feel trapped and you feel that you can't move forward. So the first key to stop overthinking is to catch yourself when you're doing the mental trap of mind reading or future telling. You do not have those abilities. Nobody really does. And usually when you're using those abilities is not to predict a happy future or look how this person likes me so much. I'm sure that's what she was thinking. We actually use them to put ourselves down and to prove that we're not worthy or that we're not loved or that we're not safe. So when you catch yourself doing this mental trap, see if you can recognize I'm doing the mental trap of my reading. I have no evidence to prove this thinking. Therefore, it's just my opinion, and I'm going to change my opinion to something helpful. For example, I don't know what Olga was thinking, but I would ask her. That would be a better way of approaching the situation than assuming that Olga was mad at you. <sighs> if you have questions about mental traps, I get a lot of these questions, and I can really go into detail helping you um, uncode them and think differently. But the first point is recognizing that you're doing it. Point number two is super easy. When you're overthinking, uh, pay attention. Where is your mind? Usually when you're overthinking, where is your mind? Past or future or present? I'm sure the answer for most of you is that it's in the future. That's when the overthinking goes. What if in five years from now? What if tomorrow my students don't show up? What if I miss my, my train? What if, what if? All the what ifs are future thinking and they create a lot more of future thoughts or thoughts about the future. And they create a, cre a great amount of space for the wild mind to go into. So the best way to stop your thinking about the future is to come back to the present. Uh, I know it sounds super easy, and I know in, in practice is not as simple, but I really encourage you to practice coming back to the present, even when you're not overthinking, so that it becomes a good habit that you have. How do you practice coming back to the present? Super simple. Come back to where your senses are. The things you can see, the things you can hear, the things you can smell, the things you can physically feel, the things you can taste. Use your senses because your senses, uh, senses are always in the present. 
When the mind leaves the body, we go into stressful scenarios about the future. So the idea of mindfulness is to bring the mind where the body is. That is being in the present. So in moments of overthinking, the first key is that you catch yourself. I'm doing the overthinking. I'm overthinking about this. You know it because you've done it many times and you can recognize it. When you catch yourself doing that, bring yourself back to the present. I am going to give you my best tool to come back to the present. It has been proven to be super helpful. Many of my clients with high, high, high anxiety love this tool and always give me the best feedback about it. It's called a three, three, three. So when my mind is obsessing over one thought and it keeps coming back and it keeps coming back, I stop. And I look at three things that I can see from where I'm sitting. So go ahead and do it. Say it loud, even if you're with people, three things that you can see right now. And then three things that you can hear right now. So really pay attention to what you can hear right at this moment from where you are. And then three things that you can physically feel. Now, let me ask you this. Where was your mind while you were doing this exercise? And I hope you were doing it. And if not, take your time and do it now. Your mind was probably on task. You were trying to see for three, looking for three things to see. You were looking for three things to hear. And you were trying to pay attention to three things you could physically feel. That breaks the overthinking pattern. That brings you back to the present to your senses. So it stops the overthinking. It doesn't distract you because it brings you back to the present and it breaks the overthinking. So your brain gets the message like, okay, we're thinking of something else. We're back here. We're not actually thinking we're being, if the thinking is super intense, which has happened to me right after you do the exercise, the brain goes back into like, but remember the scary thinking, I'm going to go back to it. If that's the case and that's what you're going to do the exercise again, if you need to do it twice, three times, that's fine. Eventually, your brain will get the message that we're here to be and not do and not think. So that was point number two. Point number three is to lower the stress in your life. And I was saying most people think to lower stress, you got to get rid of the thing that is giving you stress. When that's possible, that's wonderful. But the majority of times what's giving us stress is our partner. Can you always get rid of them? No, you can improve the relationship. Relationships can be stressful at times, but running away from them is not always the answer. Uh, Can you quit your job tomorrow because it's too stressful? Sometimes you can, but most of us cannot. So running away is never, in my opinion, the best answer, unless, unless you are in danger, then running away makes sense. If somebody's abusing you, if somebody is making you feel inferior, if your life physically, mentally, and emotionally is in danger, then absolutely run away. Other than that, I think you're better off facing the stress and learning positive and adaptive ways to cope with the stress. I'm going to share with you my most favorite way of dealing with high levels of stress, which is the thing I let go of first thing when I'm stressed out. So it becomes really important to put it into practice having fun. It's that simple. So have a list of 20 things that you absolutely love doing, things that light up your soul, things that you know it feels so amazing when you do them. It's like you come back to your body, you come back to your senses, you come back to a happy you. I have a list of 20 things in my wallet at all times. And when I'm not feeling, when I'm feeling too stressed, I pull that list out and I choose one activity that is doable. So if you have in your, in your list going to the ocean and you don't live near the ocean, that's going to be a bit tougher to get to. So I ask that you, uh, you write down 20 things that are easy, easy to access for you, even if they take a little bit of a drive. Like one of mine is to, is to be around horses. That brings me to my happy place. I don't own a horse in my house. I don't own a horse actually in Canada. So The the nearest thing I can do is go to a farm where I volunteer and it's an hour from my house. So I have to plan it, but it's so worth it when I do it. So write down a list of things that are 
that make you happy, make you happy, not your partner, not your mom, make you happy. And they don't have to be as sophisticated as, you know, going to the ocean or going an hour away. Think of having coffee with a friend. Think of playing a board game. Think of sleeping in. Think of taking a day off. Things that make you happy. Just want you to think about that. And if you're feeling over, like you're overthinking and you're feeling overwhelmed and you're stressed out, please listen to me. That's the only thing you remember out of this mini course. Do something that's fun, that reminds your mind that even in moments of stress, moments of stress, you can have fun. You are allowed to have fun even when life gets serious. Please trust me from the bottom of my heart. That one thing has helped me survive everything that I've ever been through, from overcoming death to overcoming being uh, under extreme unsafe circumstances in my country, to the struggles of being in a new country, not speaking the language, to starting, to st having to start my life all over again, to infertility. I tell you, it's been my best friend, the best tool I could ever apply is when I become my friend. When I say to myself, you know what, Olga, although life is not good right now, we're going to do something good for you and you're going to laugh. I'm, I'm here for you. It's a way of showing up for yourself. So please have fun. Don't let your overthinking, don't let the stress in your life take you away from the, motion, the notion that life is still beautiful and it's still possible to laugh and it's still possible to show up for yourself. So that's seriously the best advice I can give you to stop overthinking, believe it or not. Because when you're laughing, when you're having fun, you really forget out your worries, at least for a few moments. The other point I wanted to talk to you about is keeping a journal of your thoughts. Guys, this is super helpful. There's tons of research supporting it. Uh, I have a lot of clients who feel weird about writing. They don't like writing and that's fair. So I'll give you an alternative if that's you, if you don't like writing. But for the majority of us, we're overthinking because we haven't actioned the thoughts. We have a thought, but we haven't done anything about it. Well, you don't have to actually do something about the thought, but what you can do is write all your thinking down. All the garbage in your mind that is taking real estate in your mind. If you put it into a paper and write it down, it leaves the mind, at least for that moment. So guys, I have a little journal next to my bed because that's when I do my overthinking. I don't know you, but it's always when I'm ready to go to bed that my mind starts thinking of all the stuff I didn't do and all the things that I'm supposed to be doing. It attacks me late at night or really early in the morning. So what I've learned to do and has been really helpful for me, has been really helpful for my clients. And again, guys, I can give you um, uh, citations of research that has proven this is a helpful way to stop the overthinking is to have a dumpster, I call it the dumpster, is a notebook next to your bed or next to, in your purse, whatever it is that you, you uh, do your overthinking. Just have a journal where you are going to write down everything you're thinking about, all your negative thoughts, all your fears, all your worries. I personally rip the page after and throw it away. I don't wanna have that energy in my house. I don't wanna have it in my brain. I definitely don't wanna have it in a journal. This is not a journal that you're gonna go back to to read, oh, look what I was thinking on March 4th. Now, you don't wanna pre-read this, you simply wanna do the exercise of give it the attention, right? Because the more we resist the thoughts, the bigger they come. So you want to uh, give it attention, I understand you're there, and I'm writing all of you down, and then I'm gonna get rid of you, physically. <laughs> this allows new space in the brain, and it's so, so therapeutic, so I really suggest you get into the habit of doing that. Now, if writing is not your thing, if you hate writing, then I suggest you grab your phone and you record yourself venting. So you could be in the car driving home, you're gonna grab that uh, phone and you're gonna record yourself just emptying all your thoughts. I'm afraid of this, I'm worried about that. Just say it out loud because sometimes when we say our thoughts and fears out loud, we're like, wow, that makes not a lot of sense. At least that's what happens in my office when people are talking about their fears, they realize now that I say this out loud, it's not that big of a deal. To so empty the mind, that's the point. Not with other people, but in uh, privacy with yourself, either by writing or talking to your phone. Same idea if you're recording yourself, by all means delete the recording after. Point number five. This is a big one to stop overthinking. 
the main cause of creating more thinking and more thinking about the thing you're thinking is when we ask the question, why? But why did he do this? But why do I feel this way? But why am I thinking this? When you ask the question, why? You go down the rabbit hole and there is no good answers. Usually you come up with answers where you're uh, blaming yourself, you're blaming somebody else, and there is more, and why? And then why? So you're never ending the thinking. So if you're overthinking, notice how many times you ask the question to yourself, why? Why am I here? Why is this happening to me? Why did this not happen? It, it, it is so blameful and guilt tripping and stressful to ask that question. So I suggest instead you ask, now what? Because that gives your brain thinking of possibilities and not limitations. So if you are a person who tends to ask why a lot to yourself, to life, to the universe, you are likely doing a lot of overthinking because the whys never ever end. So change the way in which you're asking yourself a question. Okay, this has happened. Now what? Then your brain starts thinking of possibility. This is huge to stop overthinking. Last but not least, and I don't think this comes as a surprise, uh, especially because you guys know I teach this. I suggest as the best, absolutely best way to stop overthinking is to really try and discipline your mind. So the mind is while thinking all kinds of thoughts which is part of the, the, the mind's nature, but we can begin to train the mind to be disciplined, to stay on task. Right now I'm working, so I want my mind to stay on work. Right now with my uh, husband, so I want my mind to stay on task. We're cooking. I want my mind to stay on task. I'm driving. You can discipline the mind, and the best way to go about disciplining the mind is through the practice of meditation. So if you've never tried meditation, if you are like I used to be thinking meditation was for people who are really passive, trust me, meditation is for everybody. Everybody can do it. All it takes is your willingness to do it and is the best way to stop the mind from being wild. The goal of meditation is not to stop the mind from thinking because that's the main, that's uh, the, the brain's main objective is to think. We can't stop an organ's natural um, functioning. We, we don't want your eyes to stop seeing. We don't want your belly to stop digesting. We don't want your mind to stop thinking. We don't. What we want to do is discipline the mind. We can never know why we have the thoughts, the thoughts we have or why the thoughts come when they come. We can control our thinking, but we can certainly control bringing the mind to where we want the mind to be. And that's what meditation is all about. Meditation is about bringing the mind back to the objective of the meditation, whether that is your breath, a candle, a sound, is disciplining the mind from going everywhere and bringing it back here. And we do that a million times in meditation class. You're more than welcome to listen to any of the free meditations in my website. There is a link that says free meditations. And if you don't like my voice and you'd rather go somewhere else, there's tons of apps you can download. You can go into YouTube and you can listen to um, free meditations for short periods of time, long periods of time. It does not matter. The practice is to discipline the mind. So do it as often as you want to and do it often. That's the key. That's it for now. This, is, this concludes my mini course on how to stop overthinking. I sincerely hope this information comes handy to you. I sincerely hope that you take one of these concepts and integrate it into your mind. And I sincerely hope to hear back from you. Can you please let me know? Did you try this? Was it helpful? Do you think that somebody else needs to hear this message? If they do, and you're going to share it, I really ask that you ask that person to reach out to me. I will give this information to anybody. But I really would prefer if you do not distribute this video, but if you let me be the person who, who is distributing this video. So from my heart, my heart to yours, well, I have two hearts right now because my baby boy is in my ears, but I'm still talking from my heart. From my heart to yours, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, my best wish for you is that the overthinking stops and that you become a happy, healthy person. Thanks for listening and talk to you soon.